the Holy Spirit comes directly to you speaks directly to you there is no need for a tower Holy Spirit tower somewhere you know we as born-again Christians we have been taught so many things that you need to go to this mountain to hear the Lord speak you need to go to this particular altar no the Lord is near he's very near at hand that's what he says in his word so the Holy Spirit is what gives you what quickens your spirit for you to hear directly from God so I'm going to speak about a very simple subject but it's very crucial to all of us um, hearing the voice of God in the midst of noise hearing the voice of God in the midst of the noise I will start with a story I've told this story before and I think Pastor Ricky has spoken of this story of a gentleman who was walking down the streets of New York now if I could give you a, an example of the noise in the in downtown New York it's kind of like being in the new taxi park combine it with old taxi park combine it with I don't know which other taxi parks because they are full it's full of cars at any one point there's somebody hooting at somebody very much like our Kampala so the story goes that this gentleman was walking down the street with a with a, an American Indian chief and as they walked down the street with all that noise the Indian chief spoke to the man and said did you hear the cricket do you hear crickets and the, and the man was like how can you hear a cricket in the midst of all this a cricket is a chinyanyan kule in Luganda for those of you who may not know but in the midst of all that he said how can you hear the sound of a cricket in the midst of all this noise and he said you only hear what your mind is tuned to hear and he told him listen do you hear the coins that have fallen and at that point in time the man listened and heard the coins that were falling and he said to him you heard the voice of the coins because that's what you're looking for when you're looking for the voice of God when you're trying to listen to the voice of God in the midst of all that's happening you will hear him otherwise you'll be listening to all the other things all about you but as before I go into all this I know I've been asked this this question many times before that have you heard the voice of God I know many of you are Christians here some of you are not Christians but still have you heard the voice of God have you ever heard the voice of God anyone have you ever heard the voice of God if you're a Christian you should be saying yes I have but have you have you ever heard the voice of God? Eh, hey, no. Now I'm going to show you that God is speaking. But are you listening? God is always speaking. And it's up to us to switch our antenna up so that we know. Historically, from the beginning, we know that the world was created by the voice of God. He spoke, Genesis chapter 1, we know, we see the account of how that happened. He put everything that is into place. He spoke the word. Bible says, and God spoke. Everything that was, was created. When you go into the Genesis account, you will see that. God continued to speak to his people. Exodus, we see Exodus chapter 10. It's all about God speaking. He gives the commandments. God is speaking. People could hear him. Today, are we hearing him? Are we hearing the voice of God? But maybe when I ask the question, have you ever heard the voice of God? You might think to yourself, you expect, you know, as we watch movies, a lot of the time you expect this voice of James Earl Jones coming, hear he, my servant. And then you hear a booming voice and he gives a command. That's what we expect sometimes, right? But that's not how God speaks all the time. He may speak like that in a booming voice. He may, but he doesn't always speak like that. So how do you know how God speaks? First off, we must understand God speaks. 
Let's go to the Psalms. Uh, Psalm 94, verse 9. It doesn't speak directly about God talking, but it says something very interesting and it caught my eye. It says from verse 9, Psalm 94, verse 9, it says, He who planted the ear, shall he not hear? He who formed the eye, shall he not see? If we extrapolate this a little more, he who created the mouth, will he not speak? If God, the one who created this ear, you think this ear was for nothing? It's to hear him speak. If he created the eye to see, it's to, for you to see what he is doing. If he created the mouth, therefore he himself, he speaks. So that is enough evidence to show you God speaks, but are we hearing him? In the midst of all the noise that there is. So we move to how then does he speak? Because it's not just, it may not just be that he's speaking through the mouth and through a booming voice, but it may be that he's speaking through ways that we are not hearing or we are not understanding. I'll give you an example. Sometimes when babies cry, I'm sure all of you have seen a baby, you know what a baby is. But to the mother, to the parent, they will know what each individual cry means. To you, you will just hear the baby going, ah, ah, and you won't know exactly what it is. But to the mother, they know the cry of hunger, they know the cry of pain, they know the cry, every different cry, they will understand. So, God is speaking, but are we understanding what he's saying? Are we hearing how he, what he's saying? So let's look at how God speaks. How does God speak? God speaks, number one, through his son. Let's go to Hebrews, our reading for today. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. Hebrews 1, 1 to 2. It says, In the past... God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times in various ways. We have seen that all through the Old Testament. God speaking through the prophets. That's why you see a lot of the Old Testament is full of prophets. After the Pentateuch, you go into the prophets. Then it goes in verse 2. But in these last days, you believe we are in the last days? Do you believe we are in the last days? Yes, it says, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he also made the universe. For us to actually know this better, we have to go back into John chapter 1 and verse 1. I know many of you can quote it off head. In the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was God. Through whom all things were made. So God, first of all, speaks to us through his son. Through Jesus Christ. When Jesus speaks to us, when he tells us the things that we are meant to do, he is speaking directly to us. So if I asked again, does God speak? Do you know what his voice sounds like? Listen to his son. You will have heard him speak. The things that he says do, you do. Mary was very wise. Mary, the mother of Jesus. The very first miracle that Jesus did. She told the disciples and all the people around, do what he says, do. And they went, they brought the water as Jesus had told them, and they did exactly what he said, and they got the miracle the very first miracle that Jesus performed in the Bible. Secondly, God speaks through his creation. Those trees that you see out there, they are speaking something we may not be able to understand. God speaks through nature. A lot of the time today, we see things happening. You go to Waiisi. How many of you have been to Waiisi? I have. When the rain falls in Bwaiise, you know what happens? Floods. That is nature telling you, this was a swamp. But you didn't pay attention, you built here, now you have to swim your way home. 
Sometimes as you're sleeping, the rain falls and your basins start going. Nature is telling you, this is the wrong place for you to build. Sometimes different things happen because we have not paid attention to what's happening. God is speaking through the creation. But we are not hearing. Psalms 19, from verse 1 to 2. Psalms 19, verse 1 to 2, it says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. Do you need a voice for that? The words do not get spoken, but the voice has come out. Every morning as you see the sun come to you, as the sun beats down on you, it is speaking, it's declaring the glories of God. These are things that we see every day, but we expect a booming voice. My son. <laughs> I know some of you have woken up now. But <laughs> we hear and we see these things every day. But do we recognize what God is saying through them? God is speaking. Are you listening? He still uses words of prophecy to this day. Words of prophecy, dreams and visions, as well as signs in the heavens. As he promised in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 28 to 30. But there are things in nature that God has used. We see it in the Bible. Balaam, <laughs> there are some things that are actually strange. You look in the Bible and you say, how did this happen? There's the story of Balaam and the talking donkey in Numbers chapter 22, 21 to 25. Balaam was talking, was actually trying to force his donkey to move and it refused. Until it spoke, that's when he realized something is wrong. Unfortunately, in the story, Balaam goes on and has a full conversation. If it were me, and I'm having a conversation with Kitty at Shane's house. I, the moment Kitty says, you guy, I'm like out of the door. <laughs> I'm like, cats are not meant to speak to me. Nevertheless, God still uses nature. Jesus himself, he used an example. He said, when they were telling him to silence his disciples, he said, I tell you, in Luke chapter 19, verse 40, I tell you that if these should keep quiet, the stones would immediately cry out. Meaning, God has the power to use every portion of his creation to speak to you. But he only gets to those extremes when you are not paying attention. When you are not seeing the things you need to see, when you're not listening to the things you need to listen to, God will go to the extremes. I'll move on just a little more. I'll get back to the, to the message. But I just need to, for us to bring out a little more of what the voice of God sounds like. In Ezekiel chapter 4, 43 and verse 2, Ezekiel chapter 43 and verse 2, it says, And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east. His voice was like the sound of many waters, and the earth shone with his glory. This same reference is used many other times in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 15, says the same thing. His voice was like the sound of many waters. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 13, we see this happening even again. It says in verse 11, 1 Kings 19, it says, Then he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore into the mountain and broke, broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. 
We see so many times there are so many things that appear like the Lord, like the presence of the Lord. We see people, as Mr. Shane was telling us the story, and I'm not saying that there was not presence of the Lord, but sometimes you see a service, people are running up and down, falling all over the place, screaming. But is the Lord in that? There is so much noise happening around us in the world, in the church. Is, law, is the Lord in that? Bible says in verse 12, And after that, an earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And the fire, a still, and after the fire, a still, small voice. So we have seen the voice of God may sometimes be a big voice. Or it might sometimes be a still small voice. His voice can bring everything to a standstill. And yet, his voice might need everything in your mind to come to a standstill for you to hear him. Sometimes God will make a big loud noise for you to hear. And yet sometimes he just wants your attention. That's when he will come in with a still small voice. Let's go back to the message. By the Holy Spirit, God speaks to us by the Holy Spirit. As a believer in Jesus, as a believer in Jesus, as a Christian, the Lord has given us a helper who is the Holy Spirit. He is there at our beck and call anytime you need him. He is the one through whom every word, every scripture is exposed and we get to know what he is saying. Romans chapter 8 verse 26 to 27. Romans 8 26 to 27 it says, In the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. This is the NIV. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Verse 27, And he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. By the Holy Spirit, we know directly, we, need, we hear directly in our spirit. We do not need a tower. You see when you're when you're in an area, I, I, I happened to travel across the, this country at some point, and there are areas you go to and you do not have network. You get somewhere, you, there's no MTN, so you have to look for Airtel. So we used to move around looking for network. You go up a hill, you know, until you find network. In God, the network is through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your tower, the one that, you, that gives you direct access. So you do not have to hear through these ears here. No, because what you need to hear is in your spirit. The Holy Spirit comes directly to you, speaks directly to you. There is no need for a tower, Holy Spirit tower somewhere. You know we as born again Christians, we have been taught so many things. That you need to go to this mountain to hear the Lord speak. You need to go to this particular altar. No, the Lord is near. He's very near at hand. That's what he says in his word. So the Holy Spirit is what gives you, what quickens your spirit for you to hear directly from God. We stand here and we speak. You know, your pastors here, they stand here and speak. But what they say, they download from the cloud. <laughs> they download from heaven. They hear. You too have that ability. God has given it to you. God has given you the ability to interface directly with him. And this is through the Holy Spirit. God speaks to us through his word. That's the fourth. It is impossible for you to be a Christian and not have any interaction with the word of god i'll say that again it's impossible for you to be a christian and have no interaction with the word of god otherwise where are you getting your instructions from where are you getting your knowledge from your understanding from 
you need to know the scriptures. It's so funny and very interesting to note. Jesus knew the word. I know he is the word, but he knew the word. He read the word. It was in him. David spoke and said in Psalms 119, Thy word have I hid in my heart. Why? That I may not sin against you. So, do you know the word? We need to spend time with the word. We need to read the word until it becomes part of us. Until the word of God is just coming out of us. In your normal conversation. There's a friend of mine who every time I'm listening to, uh, in case he's making a phone call, and every time he begins, there's a scripture, there's a reference, there's this and that about the word of God. He doesn't just speak for some of us, we claim to be Christians, but the last scripture that came out of your mouth was John 3.16, and that was it. And that's all we know. Now, I'm not saying that it doesn't make you a Christian. That, sorry, that you're not a Christian. No, there is no re requirement for you to first know all the scriptures for you to become a born-again Christian. But once you become a born-again Christian, you need to develop a friendship with the word. Why? Because this word is inspired of God. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now, you, my fellow Christian, if you do not know the word, what do you know? What do you know? What do you speak to one another? The Bible says, speak to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. What do you speak to one another? How do you edify each other? This word of God, the one that we read, is an inspiration of God's heart. And this is the lived out word of God. Men and women who God used and he put that together and gave it to us. That is the word. That is the Logos word. But then there is also the word who is Christ, where we started from. He is the one who now quickens our spirits through his Holy Spirit that this word can come alive in us. Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, for the word of God is living. It's not a dead word. The scriptures we read here, they're not about a dead God. They're not about dead people. They're about a living God, the living word. And because Christ is alive, the word he speaks is alive. Verse 12, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. When we get into the habit of reading, we need to get into the habit of reading the word, studying the word. It's not enough to read. Some of us just read the word and leave it there. Because we were told, you know, you need to read the word. When you get saved, read the word, read the word. No, don't stop at reading. Study. Study the word. There are things that I know that I read many years ago. I can quote for you word for word some of the things that I've read through the years. But I didn't study those things. They do not make any impact in my life. Because they have no real life application to me. So read the word. Study the word. Meditate on the word. Think about it. Let it always come back to you. Think about the word. Because let me tell you, when you invest in the word, at some point, the world is going to ask you a question. If you don't have the answer, my friend, you will find yourself in a very precarious situation. So, medit meditate on the word. Memorize the word. It helps. Every time the devil came to Jesus and spoke to him, he came back to him with the word. Because it was right there on his fingertips. Some of us have to fast Google. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm one of those. Sometimes I have to fast Google the scripture. What does this say? What does this say? Memorize the word. Let us be in the habit of doing that. 
at the right time, the Holy Spirit will bring to mind the things that you have read. It's just like if you are in an exam and they're asking you about certain principles that you have been reading. When you're in that exam situation, sometimes things will come back. And that's when you will get an A. Other times, things will totally refuse to come back. I remember being in an exam one time. And uh, I think I had read the whole night before. And so the following morning, I had a paper to do. And in the midst of the paper, I looked at the paper and I tried to do a simple multiplication, which I knew off head on any day. And it refused. So I just told the invigilator, I'm so sorry, I can't do this paper. So I told, he asked me why I couldn't do the paper. I was like, I've got a brain lock. Because now what I had in my mind had stopped working. The brain was not braining, as you will say these days. But at the right time, the Holy Spirit reminds us of the scriptures that we need to know that will be applicable in our minds, in our sets. Luke chapter 21 and verse 15 says, Therefore, settle it in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer. This is Jesus speaking. For I will give your mouth I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. The Holy Spirit himself will give you unction to speak. People usually use these words. He'll give you unction to function. <laughs> but he will remind you of the things that you need to remember, when you need to remember them. For those of you who go out to outreach, many times you discover the word that you knew from before. You might have prepared a very good speech, but when you get there and somebody asks you a question, you know that what you invested in, the scripture you invested in, is what will come back. The Holy Spirit will remind you. Number five, through prayer. The, God speaks to us through prayer. Our primary communication with God is prayer. So as a Christian, the two things that are always with us are reading the scriptures and prayer. I remember at some time Pastor Butch was asking us here. It was like, there's a question. What's more important for a Christian? Reading the word or praying? And the answer is, what's more important? Breathing in or breathing out? What's more important? <laughs> they are both important. So it is like that. To a Christian, reading the word and praying are two very important things. It's like breathing in and breathing out is to us. If you breathe in, you expect to breathe out. If you hold your breath in, my friend, that could be disastrous. If you only breathe out, that could be disastrous. In Matthew chapter 6, Teach, Jesus teaches us how to pray. I know there are many examples of people who prayed. Daniel prayed uh, three times a day. Uh, Jesus himself, he used to pray. You can imagine, the Son of God he used to pray. How much more we? How much more you and I? Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6 to 7 says, But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, Pray to the Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Jesus is teaching us that more than the number of words that we speak, it is the quality of the prayer. The quality, not the quantity. You shutting the doors is you closing everything out. Now, you will find that on certain days, there have been times I've been at work and there's so much happening and I do not have time to close myself away. So does that mean that day I do not pray? I say, okay, this day is forfeit. And then how does it happen that in First Thessalonians chapter 5, he tells us, pray at all times, verse 17. How does he expect us to pray at all times, yet our situations do not permit. 
You're going to be in class for pretty much the whole day. Evening, you have preps. When will you get time off to pray? God is telling you, shut out everything. Shut things out. You can be in a noisy place. It doesn't mean you cannot interact with God. It goes back to that story of the man on the street, the one who heard the cricket. He shut everything out and he heard the voice of the cricket. So that's what Jesus is telling us. Close out everything. Have quality time with me. You must learn to shut out the noise around us when, even when it's so loud, so as to focus on God. The sixth, God speaks to us through others. Sometimes God will use others to speak to us. The Bible is full of examples of people who came to others and spoke to them concerning what God had said. Now, sometimes this might be because maybe our relationship with God has been severed. Who knows? Sometimes it may be God confirming something to us through someone, something he already said to us. But God will speak through others to us. Paul's calling in Acts chapter 9, verse 10 to 18, was confirmed by Ananias. God spoke to Ananias and told him, go, there's a man who's coming to you. He's going to tell you this and the other. He explained to him. And Ananias spoke to the Lord and said, But I've heard many bad things about this man. But God had instructed him concerning Paul. Number seven. God may speak to us through our circumstances. Now sometimes we may fail to hear God speak through the things that, through the audible voices, through other people, sometimes God will go through the circumstances that we are going through. But we know this, that God will never tempt us with evil. James chapter 1 verse 13. We also know, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, that he will never give us more than we can bear. So even as we are going through these trials and temptations and whatever, first of all, it is not God's doing. These things come to you there from your past actions, different things, but out of them, God has a lesson. James chapter 1 verse 2 to 8 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various tri trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but pay, let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. For he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. In this particular scripture, we learn patience towards becoming perfect. Perfect in this sense does not mean that you are without blame or you are sinless. It just means you are complete. The word perfection sometimes in the, in the scriptures talks about a completion. A person who is complete, full in all his ways, in all the workings of the Holy Spirit lacking nothing we acquire wisdom through these trials our faith teaches us to trust in god in conclusion whether you're a born again christian or not god is speaking to you he has always been speaking right now the sun is shining i think there's a little drizzle god is speaking to you he's still speaking you may not be able to hear his voice because you have not tuned yourself to it. But God is speaking. He may speak through your pastors. He may speak through your friends who are tuned in to the Holy Spirit. But God is speaking. Just listen to his voice. He might be calling you right now to salvation. Those of you who are not born again, you came to this school thinking, hey, I'm just going to go get an education. God is calling you. 
to salvation. God is calling you to him. Or he might be directing your footsteps to where you should go. God is doing these things. But do you hear his voice? Can you recognize his voice in the midst of it all? And most importantly, are you willing to obey his voice? As he has spoken to you, are you willing to obey his voice? Thank you for joining us. We pray that you have been blessed. Join us in fellowship every Sunday, 10 a.m. and 11.15 a.m. on Musajalumba Road next to Eagle's Nest Secondary School as we celebrate Jesus, our risen King. You can also check us out on Facebook at Elam Evangelistic Church and on YouTube. God bless you.